Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I finished pruning up my elephant diorama with my Thuja occidentalis trees or eastern white cedars. I've taken a fair amount of branches off the cedars and some of them are quite thick, fairly major branches. And the reason is I am going to transition these trees to a Canadian style diorama, you know, a northern Canada scene. And if I rotate the tree around, the main tree, you can see it has a natural extension to the trunk line up here. So I, I removed some of the branches in that area to kind of clean up that structure and give it a nice flowing design. At the advice of a viewer, I took the male elephant out. They said that the male elephants don't stay with the babies. It's too dangerous. So I just have the female and the baby in the diorama now. The male elephant is over here in amongst the acacia trees. Eventually I'll be doing a diorama with the male elephant and the acacia trees, pruning them up and putting them in a nice pot. I'll place the seed tray pot inside the frame and we'll have a final look at it. So here I go. Alright, let's fly in now and have a look close up. So there's the base of the three main trees. Some nice roots, some nice bark textures, some nice structures going on in the trees. Very natural looking. So yeah, I think, you know, I can rearrange these trees to even look better. These trees, um, they start out as nothing <laughs> and they're starting to develop a bit of character to them. If we go to this one at the back, it's got, you know, quite a nice root there. I pruned off a major branch there. There was just three branches growing in the same spot. And it's starting to get a bit of a, a crown on it. The other one over here is still very young. But it's, you know, getting more mature. You compare that to when I first planted this, it's come a long way. I'll put the elephant planting back on the bench and we'll get out today's project here in the bonsai zone. I've been developing these Ficus Elastica bonsai for quite a while now and today I'm going to combine them all into one pot and make a group forest planting. Here's a look at the pot I'm thinking of planting them in. It's a fairly large pot but it's not really really big. I think it'll suit them nicely. And the trees have been growing really well. They're starting to get a bit of branching on them. I planted, this is the original tree I bought and then all the rest are cuttings off of it. And the cuttings are doing really well. So today I'll combine them all into one kind of forest or clump style. I think they, they look good as a clump because the trunks don't thicken up really quickly on them. You know, not like a ficus microcarpa or a ficus benjamina. And they're a large leaf bonsai. Some people would say they're totally, there's a nice red sheath on the leaf. Some people would say they're totally unsuitable for bonsai, but the leaves can reduce fairly small. You know, never miniature, but uh, you could get this sort of a size leaf on them. That would be about, about the smallest you'd probably get uh, without doing leaf pruning or, you know. Oh, a rabbit scared me. A rabbit just took off. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, there's ways of getting leaves smaller. You leaf prune it before a show and they just as they start to grow in you get these little tiny leaves. But you know the natural leaf size will probably always be about this size when it's grown as a bonsai. Which is small for a ficus elastica. I mean the leaves can get huge if you let the trees grow. 
You might ask, why would I grow a large leaf bonsai? And every tree has its own special characteristics. These uh, ficus elasticas get a nice bark texture on them. It's kind of a dark brown and it gets all these kind of crackles in it, which, you know, most ficus have very smooth trunks and this is different. These trees grow aerial roots really easily. These are the trees they use for those rope bridges that Connor was talking about. And the trees branch quite easily. Uh, with age, you can get a, a really nice canopy on them. I did have one in the past that uh, was quite a bit more developed than this one, but uh, unfortunately it got cold in the plant room one winter and it, it died. So, you know, I always thought, well, I'm going to replace it with another one. And eventually I did, and this is the tree. So I think as I plant these as a group, I'll get a canopy on top and I think that shade and having them all in one pot, they'll generate a lot of aerial roots and it should create a very nice and interesting bonsai. Here's the pot and I've got, you know, a few different styles of trees. So here's my parent tree, which has a straight trunk and a fairly radial root base, I hope underneath there. The second clump I've got, the trees are fairly straight and they're spaced apart. So it's almost like a little miniature forest. And the third clump, the trees kind of originate from almost the same spot. So it's kind of, you know, they're all kind of flaring out from each other. It's more like a, a true clump style, whereas this one's more of a, you know, a forest arrangement. So I've got to integrate these three groups of trees and tree into the one planting. So I've got to think what would look the best. I'm going to try arranging them on the table and try and get an idea of what would look good together. I could separate the trees. I've got my single tree here, a group of them here, and then the clump here. So I could separate the, all the trees and then, you know, plant them however I want. If I can do that, it might be determined by how much the roots have fused together. So, you know, if that clump style is the roots are fused together as one tree, then I don't want to really separate it because, you know, you've already taken the time to fuse them together at the base and it's like you don't want to undo what you've already done. I tried arranging the trees and I don't know, it's kind of hard to do in the pots. You can't really get an idea of what they look like. You know, maybe a rough idea, but I think I'd have to pull them out of the pots and then arrange them in the bigger pot that I'm putting them in to kind of get a better idea. I'll start pulling the trees out of the pot. So here I go. There's one. Lots of roots in there. Now this pot has a bit of a lip on it so I'm going to have to come in and clear out the edges of the uh, root mass here so I can lift it out of the pot. It's kind of stuck right now. All right, let's see if I can get this out now. So I may just have to kind of loosen up the root mass around that lip of the pot so it's flexible enough to... It's almost coming out. I can see there's a root at the side here. You know, as usual, the roots tend to grow around the edges of the pot. Let's try it now. Just give it a wiggle, I think it's going to come now. There we go. And again, lots of, lots of roots. And now the last pot. This one should be fairly easy because it's a nursery pot. Just got to loosen it up. It feels very solid and full of roots. The pot is even deformed down here. I think there's a thick root growing down here. Well, I said this should be easy, but it's not. Wow. I think I've got to cut away the roots from the bottom. I think they're holding it in place. It's almost like wiring your tree into the pot, isn't it, with these kind of roots? Okay, that should work now. There it goes. 
Yeah, look at that root. That was the one that was causing the pot to bulge out at the side there. Thicker, it was growing out the bottom. With the trees out of their pots, I'm going to try arranging them in the pot that I want to plant them in. See if I can get some kind of a idea of a composition. All right, so here I go. I'll, um, I want to put the, the parent tree, I think up front, it would be like the main, the main tree. And the ones that are straighter, maybe off to the side like that, and maybe the other group over here. I'll try that. Can't really fit it in there, but maybe something like that. I'll step back and have a look. I'll place the tree over on the left-hand side, kind of back behind the pot. It might give me a better idea. Yeah, there's no composition that's really jumping out at me that says, you know, this is the way it should be. So I think I'll comb out the roots and maybe, you know, take it from there. When I reduce the root mass, I can arrange the trees around in the pot a little more easily. I'll put a layer of soil in the bottom of the pot so I have something to sit the trees on top of as I arrange them. So this is like a base layer. And I'm using the scoop that Susan sent me. She also sent me the books. And this scoop is fantastic. It's flexible so you can get to the bottom of your pot or your soil bin really easily. It's really amazing. And then if you want to pour it, you can squeeze it and you can get it. just get a little bit out or you can get a lot out. So it's, it's really cool. It's like having an adjustable opening on your soil scoop. That should do for the base layer. I've got the root rake out and I'll start combing out the roots. And I have a feeling I'll have to do a lot of root pruning because not on this one, but in some of them you can see a large bulbous root down low in the pot. So. I want to get them all equalized and sorted out before I plant them into the forest planting or the group planting. Now I can't say these roots have circled around the pot. I guess I'd have to say they've squared around the pot. I'll get the misting bottle out and just keep the roots misted as I'm doing all this raking. One of the exciting things about starting a project like this is you never know how it'll turn out in the end. It could look really good or it could look quite mediocre. I'll give the roots a misting. Keep them moist while I'm combing them out. So these are all cuttings off the original parent tree. They root quite easily from cuttings, these ficus elasticus. They're known for their aerial roots. So, you know, as long as they have good humidity and light, warm temperatures, they should root from cuttings quite easily. I think you can start them either in a glass of water and then when the roots just start to show move them to bonsai soil and keep them well watered or you can put them straight in bonsai soil and just keep them well watered so they don't dry out. I wouldn't try and grow cuttings in the winter I've never had luck with that. I don't think there's enough warmth and light at least here in Canada to do that so I've had good luck with cuttings in the summer on most species, but in the winter time, it's almost impossible, I've found. So the trees seem fairly well fused together. Now I probably can separate them if I need to. If the composition, if it just doesn't work, you know, having this kind of group in the composition, I can I can always separate them. It's a good time to repot while it's nice and warm in the middle of the summer. Here's a look at the roots and you can see this cutting ends about here. You can see it wiggling around there. Whereas this main tree, the root base is way down here so it was buried fairly deeply in the pot. So I I think I'm going to have to separate all the trees. I, I, um, I think it'll make it more versatile for my forest planting. I can always put them back in this type of arrangement, but 
I think I want to try them all separated and then try arranging the forest from there. So, so here I go. It won't be easy separating these. It'll be a bit of pulling. There, there's that tree separated. Um, I get this little one on the side here separated. There's that one separated. Now I've got three that were all planted fairly deeply, but they're coming apart quite easily. See that? There, so they're all separated. You can see the surface roots up here and then the bottom of the cutting is way down here. So, you know, you've either got to decide, am I gonna use these roots and cut off the bottom part or use the roots down lower and remove all the roots from the top part so I've got a taller tree. And it all depends on what is the better looking root base. I'll put these trees in a bucket of water while I work on the others. All right, let's get going on the second group of trees. I'll start combing them out. So this is the one that's more of a clump, kind of fanning out from the center. Very thick roots too, good woody ones. Which is amazing, you know, you get a root like that so quickly when it's only been one or two years since I potted the cuttings up. Probably when I repot these, they'll grow really rapidly at first. And then as the soil starts getting clogged up, they'll, the growth will slow down. I find that a lot on ficus trees. You repot them and they grow like crazy. They love having all those air spaces between the roots. And then as it starts to fill up with roots, the growth slows. So, you know, I'm a big fan of frequent repotting on ficus trees. It never seems to hurt them, especially if you repot them in the middle of the summer. They just keep on growing like nothing ever happened. Even if you do severe root pruning, they just seem to just keep going. It's amazing. I'll have to check the playlist for the, these trees. Uh, all my trees have a playlist, so you can start from the first video and just watch the playlist and you'll see all the updates to them and the progress to the trees over the years. I've got these roots combed out and it's hard to believe that thickness of a root grew that quickly, but it did. So I'll go wash them and then I'll try separating these trees. I've washed the roots and I'll try separating the trees. And I, I think this will be harder, definitely harder, perhaps impossible. So these may have to stay together as a clump. I could separate them if I really pull, but you know, it's a shame to undo what I've done already. Uh, so I'll leave these, I'll just, you know, prune the roots. I'll put these trees in water. It's getting late and I have to water all my trees tonight. So I'll continue this in the morning. It's the next day now. I just placed this tree back in the pot temporarily so I can just pull it out again. And I'll start combing out the roots on the largest tree. I already see some giant roots in here. If you look over here, some great big roots. There's a close-up look at the roots now. So I'll just keep combing. Comb away all that nice moss. I'll save that moss and use it for another project. And I'll keep on combing out the roots. Yeah, so the idea is to grow a nice balanced radial root system. You know, so all the roots, the surface roots grow evenly. You don't want one or two roots thickening up and becoming really vigorous. Otherwise, you don't get a nice round trunk on your tree. And if you get a really thick root like this, it'll feed this side of the tree more and you'll get branches coming out on the trunk more on this side and less on the other side. So if you have a nice radial balanced root system, You'll get good top growth on the tree, a nice round trunk. You'll get good root flare going into the trunk at the base. It won't be one-sided. And you'll just get a better looking tree all over. So the success of your tree can all come down to a good root system. 
I'm interested, I can't remember, but I'm going to show you a clip of this tree when it was repotted last because I can't really remember what it looked like. I'll have to go back and watch it. There's my drainage screen. Yeah, I want to see how it developed because this is quite a wild root system and I'd like to see what it initially looked like. So let's do that now. Let's go back in time and have a look at the tree when it was last repotted. So now we can plant the tree. I think somewhere about here is the front. Doesn't really matter at this stage. I'm just going to put the tree in the middle of the pot and I'm just going to sort the roots out the best I can to get a nice kind of radial root spread. So I'll start filling in around the roots. Try and get that root sorted out there. I checked back and looked at the old video. It's been three years since I repotted this tree and I didn't think it had grown much until I looked at that video and saw the small tiny stick that I planted and how large it is now. I'm looking at the root base of this tree and I've got several surface roots up here and then midway down the roots I have another kind of, I wouldn't call it a radial set, but there's more roots down here. And then there's another set on the very bottom of the uh, cutting. So I've got to decide which root plane do I want for my surface roots. If I want to make a taller tree, I would use the bottom ones and cut off all these ones up here. But I kind of, I'm getting some root flare at the base of this trunk. So I think I'd better use these top surface roots as my root plane and remove everything below. So I'll do that. All right, here I go with the big cut now. So I'll come in here and just try and cut everything off. All right, here I go. Like that. So that removes a lot of roots and leaves me with a almost flat radial root base. Next, I want to refine the root base. So you can see these roots they start out quite narrow in diameter and they get thicker and thicker and then they start tapering again. So it's not quite a potato root, but it's not a desirable look to the root base. So what I've got to do is I've got to prune them off fairly close to the trunk at an angle like this. So here I go. Like that. New roots will generate around the cut point and I'll eventually get a nice a nice flowing root base coming out. So I'll have to do that all the way around. So here's another one. Cut it like that. This root's fine. This one's very thick. Now this one isn't really a potato root. It starts off thick and tapers down, but it's still too long without any subdivision and it's too thick. So I've got to cut it back. And this one, because you want your roots to kind of flow from the trunk and then be on an angle as they go into the soil. And this one's quite horizontal, so I'm going to have to cut this on the other angle, sort of like this, like that, and I'll get new roots growing out of here. And part of this will rot away, but eventually it'll blend in and make a nice root system. There's a few other roots here I can cut back, like that. Like that here and a thick one here that needs to be cut back. Because this tree is quite top heavy and I don't have a lot of roots to anchor it into the soil, I'm going to do a lot of leaf pruning, removing some of the leaves to reduce the weight on the top of the tree. So here I go. And I'll leave just a few leaves on each shoot. I think that'll do like that. I'll get the other trees out of the water and I'll root prune them and then I can start arranging the trees in the pot. I've been thinking about this planting and I'm thinking that with the main tree over here and all these individual trees that I separated, I think I have enough trees to plant in the forest here. 
And because this clump is so well fused together, and it's looking really good, there's other trunks growing up in between here, and I hate to, uh, I think what I'm saying is, I think this clump is perfect the way it is, and I'll just plant it on its own, I think, in a nice pot, and just let it grow and develop as a clump. So I think that's my plan, to uh, take the three plantings I had, combine two of them into the pot here, and plant the clump separately in its own pot. I'm going to plant the clump style ficus elastica in this plastic training pot. I think it'll uh, suit it quite well and give it lots of room to get a nice, a nice root spread. I'll start by adding a base layer of soil. Now we'll do the root pruning on the clump style. All right, here we go. Um, so I'm kind of in the same situation with a lot of these. I'm going to have to prune this one back to here. Like that. Pruning off the thicker part, keeping the nice part of the root. Here's one that kind of curves around somewhere, so I'm going to keep the good part of the root and remove everything else. Like that. I've got a really thick root here that I'm just going to come in and prune away this root at the base here like that getting rid of that big thick root there's some coming straight down on the bottom I want to cut back like that and there's a lot of finer roots here that also need to be cut back they're going straight down so I'll come in and remove those So right now, it's not very flat, the root base, so I'm going to have to take it back further. I'll use my root rake and try and comb out the soil so I can see where to cut these roots away. I may even have to rewash them again to really clearly see what's going on down here. There are lots of fine roots here, which is good. It means the tree should recover quickly. Yeah, these have really fused together well. Okay, so we're kind of down to the roots here. I'll give them a wash and then we'll come back and we'll uh, see how I can reduce them further in height. I've washed the roots again. So now I can go in and cut them back even further. Try to get this root mass flatter. So it's not sticking up so high in the pot. It'll encourage the growth of radial roots rather than ones that are going straight down. That is getting better. Just a little more. That is not bad. I think that'll do. That's a good height for planting. Lots of nice radial roots coming off of the clump. I'm going to reduce the height of the tree also. They're a little tall. I've got a good branch here. So I'm trying to decide where to prune this. I'm thinking maybe, maybe here. Like that. And this one down here. This back one. Here. And this one right here. That's got the height pruned down nicely. That'll all regrow again. I probably won't propagate these cuttings. I have enough ficus elastica in my collection. So I think I'll just compost them. I'm going to plant the trees in the pot now. And I'll put the thickest trunk forward. And the smaller ones behind. So and I'll offset it in the pot. I'm thinking... Right about there is pretty good. So I'll fill it in with soil now. Coming around with my root rake and just making sure we're getting good contact all the way around the root base. It's kind of exciting when cuttings suddenly become their own planting and their own tree and start maturing. It's a nice step in bonsai. 
tree feels good and firm in the pot. So I'll just level out the soil now. That looks good. Let's fly in now and have a look at the clump style ficus elastica or Indian rubber tree. I think it's looking really good. I can see the potential in here of it developing into a really nice clump of trees. I can just imagine, you know, five years from now, they'll be really thick and growing well, and I'll probably get a canopy up top, and they like to drop aerial roots, these ficus elasticas, so I think it's gonna be quite a spectacular planting in the future. At the moment now, it I like it. I, I'm glad I kept it, the little clump of trees, so. So we'll uh, check up on this regularly and see how it progresses in the future. Next up is my forest planting of Ficus Elastica. This is like a blank canvas, and now it's time to compose all the trees. So I'm gonna start with the thickest tree, the number one tree, the parent tree, and place that, and you know, typically I always put it to the left-hand side, offset somewhere in the pot, and then arrange the other trees around it. So I'll do that. I'm picking the front of the tree, and I want to show both of these branches at the top here, these upright trunks, but I've also got to pick the nicest root base, which I think is here. So I think somewhere here should be the front of the tree. So I'll probably plant it about here. So I'll do that and I'll, uh, and probably more towards the front. So I'll try it in here. I'll just put a mound of soil around it. And about the right height, which is quite a bit higher. You'll have to sit on top of that mound of soil. Yeah, maybe about there. So that's staying upright. I'll arrange the rest of the trees in order. The largest diameter trunk first, and then tapering to the smaller one. So this is my second thickest trunk. And then my third is here. And then fourth. These two fifth and sixth. I'm going to cut the trees down in height. I don't want them to be taller than the main tree. So I think somewhere about here for that one. This one will be a little shorter, maybe here. Shorter still, maybe here. And shorter still to here and then short to here. So they're descending in thickness and in height. This is my tree number two. And you can see I have these multi-plane root bases. So in this case, there is a good set of roots at the base of this cutting. So I'll prune off these upper ones. And that'll give me a slightly taller tree. So I'll remove all these ones up near the surface here. because this part of the cutting has some nice bark on it too. It's a little yellow, but it'll change color to the dark color soon when it's exposed to air. So we're going up here, I'll remove another one here going upwards, get rid of that. So you can see I'm getting a nice flat radial root base down here. It's looking quite good. I do have a root. I do have a root kind of going uphill here, which isn't good. I think that one's got to be removed or cut back quite a bit to here. Like that. So that gets rid of that root growing upwards. And the rest are pretty good. I'll just give it a final comb out bit of old soil in there. Yeah, the rest are quite good. Um, maybe just take a little bit off this one. It's kind of vigorous, so just take a bit of vigor out of the thickest ones and encourage the others to catch up. Like that. Okay, so this tree, I'll probably plant this side towards the back.
Yeah, I, I think so. I think it needs a fairly good tree at the back here. Okay, I'll put some soil around that. Just break out the roots first. This composition may change as I get all the other trees in place. Next time looking at tree number three, I think that's the same situation. I've got good roots at the base of the cutting and I got to trim the ones up here off. So I'll do that. Always keeping your best roots. And if you can't decide, <laughs> you've got to pick one. You've got to pick a root plane. Okay, so got some really good roots and then some bad ones over on this side. So we'll get rid of those big bulbous ones. I'll just come in and prune them off like that. Kind of keeping the radial part of them. Just prune a couple of these weird roots off here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'll put that in position now. It's a pretty good front there. I'm going to leave a bit of a space. I don't want them spaced equally. So I think about there it looks good. That's looking good. I've kind of got a, a lean to all the trees. I'm trying to match that up. Also to give them a bit of a windblown style. Okay, on to tree number four now comb out the roots and again the best roots are at the bottom of this cutting so I just need to remove some of these upper ones if you do have a root that's kind of going from uh, high up here going along the trunk you could keep that as a sort of an aerial root but most of these are sticking out so they're not really suitable for aerial roots Roots are hard to cut. They're really tough and they're wet. I've got a root coming up here. I gotta cut that off like that. That's got a pretty nice root base. A few roots missing over this side, but they'll grow in. Okay, that's ready for planting. All right, I think this looks good here. I'm going to put some soil around it. Just getting those roots pruned up. I'll get the roots pruned up on this one. It's got some long roots. So I'll want to take those off. This one will have to be cut on an angle this way. This one flat. And the rest will just have to be pruned off. Like that. There's one sticking up here. Get rid of that. Another one there. The roots should flow and taper down into the soil. That's about all I can do. Okay, let's plant the last two trees now. At the moment, I've got two clumps of two trees. So if I add a third tree to each of these two clumps, I'll have three trees in each group. And I think that'll look quite nice artistically. Yeah, I'm thinking that one right there. It kind of curves like it's windblown. I'm trying to imagine like a, a hurricane or a typhoon or something blowing all these trees over. And the last one can go over here. Like that. Let's have a look at the composition before I start filling all the soil in. So here it is. Two groups of three. A little bit of separation in the middle. I, I think it looks quite nice. It's hard to imagine it once it all starts growing in and gets a bit of a canopy up there, but yeah, I, I think I think it's off to a good start. I'm kind of excited for these plantings, these ficus elastica plantings, because yeah, they can be really, really amazing trees as they get old. And hopefully these ones will, you know, reach maturity in the next couple of decades. Hopefully I'll be there to see it. <laughs> 
All right, let's get the soil filled in now. All right, here I go. This is using all my soil up. Well, that's okay. I can always mix up more. So the soil I'm using is 50% Turfus or Safety Zorb is the brand I use, and 50% Perlite. And I use the Miracle Grow Perlite just because that's what I can get locally. That's all the soil I have mixed up, and I think it's just enough, which is good. So I'll just pat it all down here, tamp it down. Uh, yeah, the level's quite good in the pot. It's just below the lip of the pot, which is just perfect. Makes for easy watering. And as the root mass grows, it usually lifts the soil level a bit, so it'll be good for quite a few years. Okay, time to give it a watering. All right, here I go with the water. I'm putting all the trees into the greenhouse after, so I'll keep them in there for a few weeks until the trees recover and start growing again. That'll keep the humidity high on them, temperatures nice and warm, and they should recover quickly. Okay, that should do it. It's time now for today's update. The first update for today is my saber leaf ficus. And it's just started growing really, really nicely. It almost looks like a weeping willow. It's a large leaf bonsai, but I really like it. The rabbits were busy chewing on the, on the aerial root here, and a bit on the trunk here, and a bit over here. But it's recovering nicely. I, it won't harm it at all. Uh, the front of the tree, I've got these pots here that just stops birds landing near the tree. So here's the front of the tree. You can see the nice root base it's getting. A few chew marks on the aerial roots here, but that'll recover. Yeah, so I'm really, really pleased with this tree. It's just turning out to be one of my favorites. The truck will be going into the body shop next week. Al from NA Automotive has bought a new building and my truck will be the first one in the building and it's going to be a paint body and assembly shop so i'm going to be raising the back of the cab up ah, a couple of centimeters to line it up with the front of the bed and then the back of the bed's got to get lifted so it's in line with the body and then i got to get all the box filled up here, or fixed up. You can see the holes here, some holes in here, down here. Yeah, it just needs uh, a lot of strengthening. Got to get this tailgate all fixed up so it's good and strong and everything works fine. You can see how spread out the uh, side of the bed is here compared to the tailgate both sides quite a tapered gap so that's got to get all fixed up so the beds nice and solid so gonna haul heavy loads once again so I'm really looking forward to getting that all fixed up and that'll be coming starting next Monday and I'll take you along for the adventure I'm in the greenhouse checking up on the seedlings and I've got some more pines coming up there's a new one coming up here, and it looks different from the others so far. I'm not sure, and there's one at the very back there that's coming up too. So, getting quite a few pines. The other mystery seeds here, this is the one that's the most developed, and I still can't tell what it is. The true leaves, the first true leaves are just starting to come out, so I think in a couple more days I'll be able to tell what kind of tree it is, hopefully. My small leaf linden's doing really well. And I noticed if you look up here, you can see the leaves are kind of eaten. And here is the culprit over here. You can see the beetle crawling on the leaf. I'm not sure what kind of beetle it is, maybe a Japanese beetle or something. But they're eating all the leaves. So I've been brushing them off and feeding them to the chickens and ducks. They really like them. The linden tree has finished flowering, so now I can deadhead it. I can prune back all these flowers because I don't want energy going into making berries or nuts or seeds. I uh, 
I just want it to go into growth. I left the flowers on because they're so beautiful, but so now I can just, oh, there's some more beetles there, see? There's two in there. I gotta get rid of those two. They hide everywhere. My apple tree is doing really well. You can see how tall the leader is getting. And I did cut it off here in spring, so these three new shoots have grown since. So it's getting to the point where I think I can safely prune off that tallest leader, kind of equalizing the growth in these three apical branches. My tiger bark ficus is doing really well. It's got a lot of roots growing over this artificial rock I made in my 3D printed pot I made. So yeah, it's doing really well. It's getting a, a nice kind of canopy on it. There's a lot of new shoots coming out now since the last time I pruned it. So doing really well, the tiger bark ficus. My last update for today is my ficus benjamina. Getting a nice root base, a nice trunk. And last time I pruned the canopy fairly hard. It was getting tall. And now all that new growth is starting to come in up top. So you can see it's getting its canopy back. And it's looking really healthy and doing well. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. All my ficus elastica have been growing really well. They're starting to get some branching on them. I planted some as clumps, clumps using my Susan squirrel. I checked back on the old video. It's been Next, I want to refine the root base. You can see these boot these boots. <laughs>